The hangout is on air. <laughs> Hi, welcome to our Google Hangout. My name is Sean. Um, I'm an admissions counselor, and I'm going to talk to you about the admissions process. Next to me is a professor in our physical therapy program. Her name is Joyce. Hello. And Joyce is going to talk to you about the physical therapy program. Here in just a little bit, we are also going to have a couple students who add in, and we'll talk about the physical therapy program. Before we get to that, though, we are live and on air, and we would love for you to tweet any questions that you have to at ufinley, hashtag askuf. So tweet them, and we will get all your questions answered while we speak. Uh, first, I want to go through the admissions process a little bit. Uh, for some of you, obviously, the first step in the admissions process is to actually send in an application. You can apply any of three different ways. We have an online application. We are members of the Common Application. The Common Application is an application that allows you to apply to multiple campuses. Uh, there are about four or 500 now in the United States that you can fill out one application and apply to all those schools. So if you have that done, just check us off. Uh, we also have a paper application. If your guidance counselor doesn't have that, we can send one directly to you. Obviously, in the transfer process, if we have any transfers out there, you just need to fill out the transfer application. That is also online or on paper. We can get you either of those. Once you get your application, obviously you have to write an essay on your application too. If there's no essay, we're going to call you and say, you got to write us something. Uh, my name is Johnny. I want to come to Finley is not quite enough. You've got to go a little bit farther than that. So, uh, so I always tell students, it's about a 200 to 500 word essay, so about half a page. So once we get that, we're going to need three items from our general incoming freshmen. We're going to need high school transcripts. We're going to need ACT or SAT test scores. If your high school transcripts actually have your ACT or SAT test scores on them, that's totally all right for us. So as long as your ACT or SAT test scores are on there, that's okay. If not, we do need them directly from either the College Board or, or ACT. So you have to have those sent. Uh, lastly, we're going to need a letter of recommendation. Once we get all of those items, then we will actually look at you for admittance into the institution. Our average student has about a 3.5 GPA and around a 23 on the ACT. Now, talking about that, obviously, I always tell my students we look at everybody. So we will look at your GPA, the classes you've taken, your ACT scores, how you did in each individual section, all of those things. So if you're not quite at that, we're still going to take a great look at you. And if you're above that, then you should be just fine. Um, <clears throat> beyond the application process itself, once you gain acceptance, we do ask at that point that you uh, pay a $100 deposit. And I always say throughout the whole process, I would encourage you to come visit. Come visit as many times as it takes. So you can come visit anytime. We're open Monday through Friday and Saturday mornings. I know physical therapy has very specific times when they would like for you to come, but you can obviously come and meet with a physical therapy professor if you know those specific dates. And just call our office at 1 800 548 0932. Extension 4161 is our visit coordinator's number, and she can tell you what dates physical therapy is able to talk to you. The visit is one of the most important things you can do, so we strongly encourage you to do that throughout the process. Once you pay your $100 deposit, the next step is coming to registration. That's when you actually get to come and sign up for classes, and you may even get to meet the Joyce at that time and sign up for classes. Um, after that, you actually would go through your summer, come August 14th to move in, and uh, orientation will be all three days uh, after that, and then we'll have our first classes on August 18th. So that's pretty much the admissions process. I'm now going to turn it over to Joyce and let her introduce a couple of her students and talk a little bit about the physical therapy program, and then we're going to get moving with everything. Remember, tweet your questions to uh, Twitter handle at ufinley, hashtag askuf. Okay, so I'm going to scoot on over and ask Emily and Gina to move on in with me, and we'll try to get us all on here on the screen. Great, we're all there. Okay, so um, I'm happy to be talking about our physical therapy program. Um, <clears throat> we have Emelise right here and Gina over here. They're both students in the physical therapy program. First year, second year, DPT? Second. 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 Both second years. Oh, I'm so sorry. I've not had the first year, so <laughs> excuse that little um, snafu there. Um, <clears throat> I want to tell you a little bit about the PT program. Um, I'm really excited about this program. I'm in my fourth year of full-time teaching, but I've been involved for quite some time, and I'm really excited about Finley's program. Um, once you get accepted into University of Finley, 
as an undergrad and you declare physical therapy as a major, you will meet with a physical therapy faculty member from, di from your first scheduling session um, until you apply to the PT program. So you'll have a PT faculty member that will help guide you through all the courses you need to take and the prerequisites, um, volunteer work, and all the, thing, all the hoops you need to jump through to apply to the PT program. Um, <clears throat> and most of you who are listening may be well aware that we have the 3 plus 3 physical therapy program here where you do three years of undergrad, you start the PT program, hopefully in your senior year or your fourth year of college, and you finish in six years versus seven, which is a great advantage to get that degree. Um, and then we also can do the four plus three, where you have your bachelor's degree and then apply into the program. So um, that's just my quick little introduction to the PT program. Um, I will kind of turn this over to see if Emily and Gina have anything to say um, about their experiences at Finley. So Emily said, Gina, can you just introduce yourselves, tell us where you're from, um, and then we'll kind of go from it. <laughs> I'm Emily Spelling, and I'm from Decatur, Indiana. I am Gina Bining, and I'm from Audeville. So you're both second-year students. Tell us about a day in your life. What do you do <laughs> every day? <laughs> we start class at 8 a.m. and go to class until about 3 or 4 every day, um, Monday through Thursday. And there's a lot of, we have class and labs too. Um, like right now we have like two, two or three labs with our classes. So those may, um, like this morning we had class and then we also have lab. Um, so that's the same day, but some days you may have class and then you may have lab alternating days or whatever. So you still get some hands-on activity also with the lectures. So how much do you guys have to study? <laughs> it's tough. Um, especially your first year, um, it's just a lot of trying to find your ways into the program and good ways to study and, you know, as a graduate student, it's definitely different than undergrad. You just have to find your ways, um, but time management is definitely something that we got really good at the first year, just with juggling all the different classes and <clears throat> so like that. Talk a little bit about the size of the program and how, how tight you guys are. <laughs> We are one big happy family. We have 35 people in our class, and we we all help each other out. If someone doesn't understand anything, we just ask our partner or any of our classmates. You don't have classes outside of that. You just have those 35 kids every day. Just those 35 kids <laughs> for three years. For three years. <laughs> so you all know each other fairly well, I would say. Yeah. Yes. And then, yeah, and you kind of have to. I mean, you're with each other for how, you know, three years every day pretty much, except for your weekends, so it's definitely good to be able to get along and have a good relationship with your classmates. How's the class breakdown? How many girls, how many boys? Definitely more girls than boys. Um, I think it. we have ten boys, if that. If that. <laughs> okay. So I will ten. say one year we had almost 50-50, yeah. um, male and female, um, in the class, but generally <laughs> it runs more females than males. So have you guys taken gross anatomy yet? Yeah, that's yes. our first year. Yeah? Very cool class. Talk a little bit about that. Um, well, you're each assigned um, a cadaver down um, in the anatomy lab. And you'll be in like groups of five or six. And then you're each with a cadaver um, just following like a lab manual and kind of getting to see the different organs and stuff of the human body. It's definitely a good experience to get to actually see the muscles rather than just on models and pictures and stuff, to actually see them in person. So I know some of my students have been concerned about that. Is it as, <laughs> is it as scary as kids think that it is? I was scared going in the first day, and I was fine. I mean, they... You don't really get used yeah, to it. Yeah, you get used to it. The and they don't throw you in right away. No. I mean, it's a partner, so it's not like you doing it one-on-one. -on -one. Yeah, like the first day we went in and, you know, didn't necessarily get to see our body, but you get familiar with the smells and kind of where things are, and then you kind of gradually make your way into it. <laughs> Joyce. I am so excited. I can't wait. I need to put something in. I know the students are talking. Um, I remember when I was in PT school, and I was scared, and I thought, oh, this is so weird. It's a, it's a human body. But it's so fascinating to see where the muscle starts, the muscle ends, and you can see how it works. And it's... It's just fascinating. It was one of my favorite classes. Mm -hmm. I still remember that after all these years. Mm -hmm. So Joyce, tell, talk a little bit more about the curriculum. What kind of classes a student will expect? Okay, I can talk. Like a, 
Yes. Um, as you come into the university as a freshman, you will take the university requirements, which every university has general requirements, like your English and history kind of courses, psychology kind of courses. And then we have prerequisites that would include chemistry and physics and anatomy, um, kinesiology, biomechanics, um, exercise physiology, medical terminology. So all of those, your advisor will help guide you through the sequence of taking those courses. Um, <clears throat> you also will need to get some volunteer hours in into a physical therapy program. So we highly encourage you, in fact, in order to apply to the program, you need to have 100 hours of physical therapy observation. It needs to be in at least two different settings, at least 20 hours in those settings. So maybe in an acute care hospital, um, let's say you're in Columbus, Ohio, so you may go to Riverside and see acute care, and you may go to um, decide to go out to Lancaster to an outpatient clinic. So get two different kinds of physical therapy settings, and um, our website for our professional organization, APTA.org, has a great site for prospective students, and you can gather a lot of information about the physical therapy program um, <clears throat> and all the different practice settings. Um, you need to maintain a 3.0 GPA for, under, for your overall um, undergraduate prerequisites and also a 3.0 for your sciences. Um, your science performance is a really high um, correlation to your success in the physical therapy program, so that's why we like to see those high, higher grades or at least 3.0 in your sciences as well. And How I the averages were for <laughs> incoming students. Okay, so student, students who are coming in our accepted class into the physical therapy program have the average was around a 3.5 for their overall GPA and average of a 3.5 for their sciences, 3.4 and a 3.5 for their sciences. Um, one comment I would like to make, students who are in your high school classes, you're accustomed to um, generally performing fairly pretty well if you're interested in physical therapy. Um, when you get into college is learning how to study and we have some really nice resources here to help you make that transition from high school courses where things might come a little quickly to you and then university college level courses where you can help get you can help <clears throat> get some additional training on being successful at the undergraduate level as well. So that's really nice courses that I advise almost all of my advisees to um, take advantage of those resources that are out there. Good. Joyce talked a little bit about getting some shadowing experiences. Can you two talk about your experience when you shadowed? Where you shadowed and what kind of stuff you got to see? Um, I did one at my hometown hospital. It was a mix between like acute care and outpatient, so that was a good variety. Um, I got to see aquatic therapy, so that was pretty interesting. Um, and then I did my other site at Indiana Physical Therapy in Fort Wayne, and they actually had a lot of Finley graduates, which kind of swayed me to apply here. Um, I also did a lot of outpatient. Um, I was in the hospital some, um, a nursing home, um, pediatrics. So I don't know. I definitely recommend just getting a wide variety of things. Like Emily's was saying, like she did aquatics. That's you know awesome to see what's all out there. And I have a comment to make about that observation hours. If you get those observation hours in before you apply to the physical therapy program, I'm sorry, before you apply to the University of Finley, make sure you tell us about that in your application essay that you're interested in physical therapy and you've done these experiences already or you've received physical therapy if you've been, a, if you've been an athlete or an artist and you've had therapy services. Tell us about that because if you apply by December 6th of your freshman year, you'll be considered for the direct freshman admit program, and that's a selective process that we can offer a um, spot in the physical therapy program your fourth year of college if you continue to meet all the requirements of the physical therapy program. So make sure you tell us what you know about PT, if you've experienced it, or had an aunt or uncle or grandma or parent who's had a stroke or some other injury. Make sure you tell us what you know about the program so we know you really know about um, physical therapy. Don't forget that we are live and you can tweet your questions to Twitter handle at UFinley, hashtag AskUF. So don't forget to get your questions coming our way. Um, young ladies, can you guys talk a little bit about what you do outside of study? Do you have jobs? Is there time to have a job? Do you, are you involved in outside activities? Do you do intramurals, anything like that? So. 
Yeah, there's definitely, you definitely need time for other things in your schedule besides study. <laughs> um, there's definitely intramurals that um, you can get involved in. As like a PT class, we kind of had a sign up sheet and did um, intramurals. There was also like a PT Olympics um, that we kind of got involved into. Um, and there's also um, like graduate assistant assistantships, which you can use. Um, it's kind of like a job, but they kind of help pay for school too. So that's an option. Are either of you guys grad assistants, by the way? No, no. no. But we both have part-time jobs outside of yeah. um, class. There's time. And then we like to be competitive with the other cohorts in our physical therapy program. So we like to have different competitions. We had a chili cook-off. And we had a cookie bake, I think, last year between the classes to see which is a better class. <laughs> so what did your class won at? <laughs> <laughs> Not a whole lot. Not really. Kind <laughs> of a good fight. Yeah, we participate. <laughs> so does the class underneath you win or the class above? Class above. So in one more year, you guys can dominate. Then, yes. Right? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> uh, so clinical experience, are you guys going on your first clinical this summer then? We have already had our first clinical, okay. so we'll go on clinical two this summer. Can you talk a little bit about where you went, what kind of experiences you had, things like that? Um, your first clinical um, is going to be what they call an acute setting, which is more than likely your hospital setting. Um, so that's just kind of getting your feet wet, knowing you know what to expect and stuff. Um, our second clinical is um, considered outpatient, so that's kind of any type of clinic you would go to possibly, um, and then more, you would do a neuro, uh, and then your fourth clinical is kind of pick your own, whatever interests you. So again, can you guys talk a little bit about where you went on your first one, where you plan to go maybe this summer? Um, my first one was at my county hospital. Um, I saw, again, a good mix of acute care, outpatient, just different. I went to the skilled nursing facility, and I really liked it because I wasn't doing the same thing over and over. I kind of had that mix. Um, and then I planned to do an outpatient clinic um, in Fort Wayne that actually is tied to one of the orthopedic hospitals, so I'll see a lot of orthopedic issues. So I'm excited about that. My first clinical idea, uh, Fostoria Promedica. Um, I did some outpatient. I was in the hospital. I also did some nursing home. And my clinical instructor was also involved with a lot of um, administration and kind of like book work things. So that was kind of nice just to see like the business aspect of physical therapy. Um, and then my outpatient setting will be in uh, Ottawa this summer. Joyce, can you talk a little bit about clinical you know, where we play students, yes. how we help students get those business, things yes. like that. We have a person on faculty, one of the faculty members, is directly um, responsible for helping to place the students in their clinical affiliations. Um, she may, We maintain an extensive list of um, contracted places where we have contracts that establish contracts with facilities, but we also will establish a contract elsewhere if um, you decide you would like to go stay with a grandparent or a relative or a friend who lives in another state, um, as we can start to establish a contract with those facilities um, as long as they're an acceptable um, ethical facility so that you have so many options for clinical placements and not all universities will do that for you. So we're really proud of that here at Finley. And we have agencies, facilities across the country because we also have a weekend physical therapy PT assistant to PT program, and these students come from across the country, so they're really spreading the word about the University of Finley across the, across the country, so that's really exciting for our students. Like Emily's was in Fort Wayne, I had a, um, a friend from my church um, said she was in Houston, Texas, and her therapist was from Finley, so that's pretty exciting, pretty exciting stuff. So is, does anyone know any, anyone who has went anywhere really fun and exciting? Outside of we Fort Wayne and, and Finley? Somebody had went to South, Car South Carolina, Hilton Head area, I yeah. think. Um, somebody else is maybe trying to go to Hawaii. Yeah, someone's trying to go to Hawaii. I know a couple of girls in our class are going to Florida this summer for their outpatient clinic. So. We've had students in Hawaii. We, there's one gentleman who's staying with his grandparents on Hilton Head, and I think he's getting mm -hmm. his whole summer um, on Hilton Head. Um, there, 
There, we've tried to work on a custom international affiliations, and we have some possibility for that as well. Um, of course, you're responsible for all of the all of your living expenses when you go, which is why people like to stay with family members or friends from high school, from college, from undergrad. Um, so there's lots of options there. Do we have a Twitter question? No. Okay. It's just mm -hmm. writing stuff down. Um, <clears throat> ah, maybe we weren't here. Oh, sorry. Uh, what kind of job opportunities are there in the physical therapy world, and where do you guys plan? What do you what field do you want to work in when you guys are physical therapy? Well, you guys start with what you want to do, <laughs> then I will follow up and tell you all the options. Um, I would love to work with little kids, pediatrics. Um, I'm actually working with um, two little kids right now um, outside as a job, um, so that's good experience for me. And my Fifth clinical, the one that um, you kind of get to pick what you want to do. Um, I'm hoping to also get into a pediatric facility. And I would like to work in like an industrial setting or and an ortho outpatient. Um, industrial is kind of going into factories and um, looking at the ergonomics and just the body mechanics that the workers are using. It's up and coming. So. And just hearing these ladies talk about what they want to do is just exciting to me. We have so many options in the world of physical therapy of what you can do with your degree. You can do outpatient and work with orthopedic kind of issues. You can work with geriatrics, um, industrial work, which I'm really impressed. A lot of our students don't think about that. Um, and we had it, one of our um, one of our students was out on the clinical and was able to resolve a resolve an issue at a workplace that. Um, Actually, the current therapist who was there was struggling with. <laughs> um, what other? You can work in a skilled nursing facility. You can do research. You can work in hospice. You can work with pediatrics. You can work in a hospital with pediatrics. You can work with spinal patients who have spinal cord injuries. You can um, do pro bono work. You can do missionary work. Um, so many different options. And the great thing about that is, myself, for example, I worked many years in pediatrics. And I really got to be quite an expert in pediatrics. I'm thinking, what's the next avenue I'd like to pursue? Maybe I'd like to do manual therapy. And I still have such an enthusiasm about the field of PT, even after being a therapist for 30 years. And I just think it's, if you have a desire to work with people, it's just one of the best things, um, opportunities you can do. And kind of a related issue there with the different practice areas. Our faculty on our pro in our program have different specialties. We have orthopedic specialists. We have pediatric therapists. We have someone who specializes in occupational health. Um, we have ger people who are geriatric specialists. We have manual therapy specialists. We have someone who's really doing a lot of research with Parkinson patients. So we have such a wide variety of physical therapy faculty. And part of that's because we have the traditional program that these ladies are involved with, but we also have the weekend program. So we have double the amount of faculty that a lot of other programs have. So you have lots of opportunity to kind of pick the brains of those faculty members and the opportunity to work with research um, with those faculty members. You go through a couple of research series courses, and Gina's actually working with me on a project um, right now. We're doing looking at parent and therapist satisfaction with physical therapy service provision with early intervention, which is those children birth to three who have disabilities or at risk of disabilities. Um, so you can identify which faculty. We have a faculty member who's really interested in hippotherapy and research with horses, so you can go that way, or fitness and wellness and core strength, so there's lots of different areas to go through there as well. So, so Joyce, I'm, I love that you talked a little bit about the interaction with students. Can you guys talk a little bit about your interaction with the professors? Yeah. Um, they're definitely awesome, awesome professors. Um, they're, def they're there when you need them. Um, you can go to their office anytime. We have um, actually a PT house um, that all PT students are allowed to go in and study, do whatever they want in there. And then just across from that is actually all the PT, uh, most of the PT faculty offices. So very friendly. You can go in there, ask them any questions. Very comfortable around them, and they definitely uh, make it fun. I've had multiple professors say that we're here to help you succeed. Um, a couple of our professors have even gone out of their way to have review sessions and just stay after class, or have different times where we can go in and ask questions and get a little bit extra help if we're not um, understanding a topic. So it's really nice to have that support too. So, Joyce, back to the uh, employment question.
question a little bit. What kind of money? Uh, what are the average salaries <laughs> oh, of graduates? Gosh, I, just, I just looked at that. In fact, I'm going to cheat and look at. Um, I believe the average salary is in the 80s, but entry level is in the 60s, I believe. Is that what you guys? Yeah, I think so. So at 65 would be entry level, and um, average is about 80,000 for entry level, um, or for average um, positions, which can vary depending on where you're, where you're practicing. OK. Um, that's most of the questions that I have. What else would you guys like to add? What, what, tell, tell me what pr prospective students need to know. <laughs> um, I would just say, like Joyce was saying before, to do your observation hours now. Um, get them over with if that's PT something that you're looking um, into. Or if you kind of know um, a field that you may want to go into, uh, make sure you do observation hours, more, maybe more observation hours in that area. But don't shy away from your other areas that you may not be as interested in. I would say the same thing. If you start early and then you, you find, oh, I never even thought about aquatic therapy, you still have time to do those observation hours before you get into the program so you know what to kind of specialize in when you get here. And I'll follow up with that a little bit. Um, sometimes you come into the program thinking you really want to do a certain discipline or a certain part of physical therapy, but once you learn more about the program, you might decide, oh, or you go, get out on your neuroclinical and you thought you wanted to work with outpatient orthopedics and you do neuro and you love spinal cord injury and head injury and stroke and then you may decide you want to go that way. So definitely getting that observation hours in those different settings um, and then keeping your mind open as you get through. But like Emily's mentioned, you do have an opportunity in the last semester of the PT program to choose a selected topics elective. So you can choose the occupational health, the pediatrics, the manual therapy or um, a genetics course I believe. Um, and I did have a couple things that I wanted to add in about our experiential learning. We have several opportunities in the PT program to actually get your hands on uh, patients. In the first year, I know some of the faculty bring in live patients. In your lifespan course, you get to see children, typically developing children, and does, does Lindsay bring in abnormally developing children with disabilities as well into that? Yeah, yeah. So you get to see what a normal child, what child normal development looks like, and then what abnormal looks like. Um, you have an opportunity in the community health and cardiopulmonary series to work with employees of the university who want to make a change for their, for their wellness. So you actually get one-on-one -on -one time there. In the neuro series of courses you have a six-week patient treatment series where you actually see a patient once a week, is it, or six weeks or twice a week? Right now, right now we don't, we are just taking neuro one right now, but oh. she's been able to bring in patients. Um, with maybe um, spinal cord injuries or traumatic brain injuries or strokes and we've been able to assess them and you know feel for different things on them or whatever so it's that's really helpful too to see actually how they present. That's a really great thing because in lab we can try to replicate what the problem is but when you have a real patient you really can get an experience of what that feels like and then like I said the neuro series I believe it's once a week for six weeks um, orthopedic patients can be brought in. We also have some service learning opportunities. We do developmental screenings. We do. We can volunteer at Special Olympics. Um, we also have a service trip that we do that's optional that we've done for the last two years. One year we went to Honduras. I shouldn't. Some of the faculty and some of the students to Honduras and to Nicaragua, where we go for a week and provide services there. So that's. A, Students who come back from that say they are changed. Um, it's such an amazing trip for them and to go and provide those services to people who really need um, those services. Um, so I want to give one more, one more shout out if, if you guys have questions. We're going to be live for uh, just a few more minutes here. So get those questions to at you Finley, excuse me, Twitter handle at you Finley, hashtag ask UF. And before we do sign off, though, definitely I want you guys to give us a few reasons why you chose Finley and, of course, why prospective students should choose Finley. Um, I came to campus, actually. I did a campus visit. And I was just impressed at how friendly the staff was and answering questions and just how thorough everyone was. And I really like the facilities. And I came from uh, 
larger undergrad college to come here and having that um, community and family-like feel, I really enjoy that too. Yeah, I definitely agree with Emily. So everybody, just walking around camp campus, everybody's very friendly, willing to help you no matter who it is. Um, I also came from probably a smaller undergrad college than what Finley is, but it's definitely nice to see the opportunities that Finley has, and they um, will help you succeed in anything and are definitely willing to help you. And I'll have to second that. As faculty members, we get to have a close relationship with our students. We meet with them every semester to register, and you'll get to know a faculty member right away in the PT program. So that's kind of cool stuff. Well, I want to thank all of you for joining us. Thank you all out there in the, uh, in the hangout atmosphere. And um, that's, that's it. Thank you, for, thank you for joining us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.